Today we're gonna learn how to create any text effect preset in Photoshop. No matter how complex the effect is, all you have to do just change the text and the effects will follow. Well, how is this gonna be helpful? Suppose you spent hours and hours creating an effect for a text. Now you want to replicate the same effect for a different piece of text. What to do now? In the process, you might have created a lot of layers, right? You might have also rasterized some layers, changed some blend modes, and it gets complex. And if you want to change it, either it's going to be impossible or very difficult. Today I'm going to show you a way in which all you have to do, just click on it, change the text, and all the effects will replicate itself. It's going to be fun, so without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and let's go ahead and create a new document. Really, really simple. Go to File and then New. Now you can choose any size you want, any color space you want. For the sake of this example, I'm going to choose a 1080p canvas. So I'll go to Art and Illustration and choose 1080p. That's fine. And you can name it right here, maybe Text Effect. And please develop the habit of naming it right here, right now. Why? Because if you name it right now, and when you save it, when you export it in any form, this name will come as a default and that will save you time instead of that untitled one or whatever number that is, right? So let's go ahead and create that. I'm gonna choose 1080p, everything is fine. Let's create that. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit. That's fine. Now let's give a background color to this. So let's create a solid color adjustment layer to do that. Click on this adjustment layer icon and choose solid color. And choose whatever color you want. I'm gonna choose maybe dark gray. Maybe this color is fine. And you can change the color anytime you like. So uh, if you're creating a preset, this is gonna be helpful because later for some other piece of text, you might wanna change the color. So click OK, whatever color you choose. Now let's create the text. To create the text, it's really simple. Select the type tool, the shortcut to which is T, okay, now you can type anything. Let's type maybe love and let's choose our font. Let's make it a little bigger. So select the move tool, control the command T and hold the shift to maintain the proportions and let's click and drag. Let's make it bigger, okay? That's fine, let's change the font. Double click on the T, this selects the whole text. Now let's choose Vidaloka, you can just download the font from fonts.google.com, really cool font. Now, suppose, let's paint it something, let's paint it white. So double click on the T and click on this and choose the color white or whatever color you like. Now click OK. Now here comes the magic. Instead of going forward with the text layer, let's convert it right now to a smart object. Now this might sound strange, okay? Now right click on this and convert to smart object before applying any effect, any filter, anything, maybe transforming. Before applying anything, let's convert this into a smart object. Now you might think, well, I'm not able to change the text right now. You will be able to change the text. Let me show you how, okay? Now let's give it some effects. I'll press Controller Command T and then maybe I'll choose Distort, okay? And let's give it some dimensions. And you can hold Shift and Alt or Shift or Option for Mac together to make it larger from the center. So suppose this is cool effect and hit enter if you're satisfied. Now let's give it some blur, blur gallery. So filter, blur gallery, field blur. And let's blur the E and let's give it a gradual going out of focus kind of effect. So this is one point here and let's keep the blur maybe, let's increase it a bit. 22 is fine, 20 pixels is fine. Now let's create another pin right here and decrease the blur to Zero. It's totally sharp. You can move it, play with it. Let's see what looks good for you. That's fine. That's looking fine for me. Click OK once you're satisfied. And you can go ahead, apply any amount of filters that you like. Maybe convert to 3D, maybe liquefy it, anything, adjustments, right? You can do that. Now, suppose we want a reflection of the same. Make a copy of it. Control or Command J, right? Now, Control or Command T again. OK. Doesn't really matter. Now, let's invert it just like this. And there we have the reflection. Now let's see how that works. Let's decrease the opacity of it. That's looking cool. Now this is a very simple effect. Now if you want, you can add some vignette effects. Maybe change the color to say red. Nah, that's kind of, maybe let's add a little bit dark red-ish color. Okay, just like this. 
click OK. And maybe to add a vignette, it's really simple. Create a levels adjustment layer just above the color, just above the background color. Create a levels adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose levels. Now, take the slider all the way to the left. Not all the way, just a little bit to the left. Now, this slider makes the bright areas darker, just so you know. And for a detailed, in-depth tutorial on levels and curves, watch the video right here. So, now once you do that, select the mask, take the brush, make sure the brush is hard. How to do that? Hold the Alter option, right mouse button, drag it all the way down to make it hard, drag it up to make it soft. So, we need to drag it down and Let's make it moderately big and make sure the foreground color is black and just dab once. Make sure the opacity and flow is 100%. Now, press Controller Command T and increase the size. And by the way, I'm holding Shift and Alt together to make it larger from the center. Just, I'll move it right there and maybe extend it from here. That looks good. Hit Enter if you're satisfied. And now, once you're in the mask property, select the mask. You probably will be in the mask properties if you cannot see it. Go to Windows and make sure Properties is checked. Now all you have to do, just increase the feather a little bit. And you're good to go. Have a look. Isn't this a nice effect? Also now what you can do, you can go ahead and change the color to whatever you like. Just double click on this and maybe change the shade of red. Maybe this is fine. Now click OK. Now let's save it. Simple. Just save it as a PSD file. Save as. Maybe save it as a PSD on the desktop. See, text effect comes as default and that's why I asked you to name it right then, okay? Name it there. Okay, desktop, text effect, let's save it as a PSD, everything is fine, Photoshop PSD, save it. Okay, click OK. Now anytime you want to change the text, let me show you how simple that is. All you have to do, just double click on the smart object and it opens up another document with just the text layer, isn't that cool? So. Just double click on the T and change it to whatever you like. Let's change it to hate. Okay, now the E is cutting off. How to get the E? It's simple. Crop it. Press C. This opens up the crop tool. And let's click on clear once. And now let's extend it a little bit. Hit enter once you're satisfied. And it's fine. We are giving it an extra space. And let's save it. File. Save. Okay. And then close it. Now it will update automatically. Now it's saving, let's close it. Have a look, isn't that wonderful? So this is one of the amazing ways in which smart objects work and this really blew my mind and I hope this is helpful to you too. Now you can go ahead and apply any effect that you like. You can maybe apply bevel and emboss, drop shadow, filters, 3D, metal effect. You can go hours and hours into this and still be able to change the text. All you need to remember is just this. Before applying any effect, Convert the text layer into a smart object and that's it. And once you have done applying all the effects and stuff, save it as a PSD. So the next time you want that effect, open that PSD, double click on the smart object and just change the text. <laughs> I hope that was helpful and if that was, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing. Special thanks to Kate Backdrops for sponsoring this amazing Backdrops. They've got some really really good Backdrops. If you want to go ahead and check them out, check them out right here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.